This is potentially Japan's most well-loved and revered street photographer. That reverence has been achieved through over 150 published photography books and thousands upon thousands of film and digital photos produced throughout the course of his 60 plus year career. His ability to reconsider what photography is and should be is another reason for this global renown. His quick, rough, dirty, experimental, and intense photos provoke feelings of what it's like to create photographic work on the streets in the frantic manner that often comes with wandering through urban environments with the hope that you'll find something noteworthy to put on display, which is something this photographer has done countless times throughout the course of his career. This is Street Smarts Volume 12, Daito Moriyama. Of the plethora of projects created by Moriyama to stand out is having the ability to showcase his style and the impact that he had on the world of photography during the most prolific part of his career. The first being his involvement with the short-lived photo magazine Provoke. The photographers involved in this three-issue magazine created the style known as Are Bure Bokeh, which translates to grainy, blurry, and out of focus, as a method of going against the grain of stellar, pristine, and sharp images produced for documentary photography and commercial work that was so popular at the time, also known as the realistic approach. They did this with the mission statement that they wanted to create a new photographic language that could transcend the limitations of the written word. Like Moriyama's other photos, these images work together to put the energetic feeling conveyed by the Ari Buri Bokeh technique on display much more effectively than viewing any single image out of context. The impact that these photos had on the world of photography can be felt more heavily when you consider that they were produced in the late 1960s and were completely different from anything else being put to print at that time, and that they went hand in hand with the social and artistic changes that took place in the post-World War II society of Tokyo and Japan at large. In terms of Provoke's impact on photography today, the style has gone on to be mimicked and studied with some regularity. The second project was called Farewell Photography, and it sat at the other end of this era of his life when he produced his most highly regarded work. It might seem like a somewhat ironic title, but it's about my feelings of hate and wanting to say farewell to spiritually peaceful photographs to photographs that show no doubt what photography means. It was intended to make the viewer rethink photography as Moriyama seemed to be doing himself, by creating a collection of odd and discarded images he had previously rejected. Images that were scratched, solarized, cropped, and grainy, put together in a sequence that is chaotic and leaves the viewer unable to derive any real meaning. It is regarded by some as exciting and revolutionary, and by others as tragic and nihilistic. Moriyama argued that farewell photography was a truer representation of reality than photos typically regarded as showing realism in the news, which he claimed are plain and simple. He has disdain for those who consider his work to not be a reflection of realism, and those who consider his style to be nothing more than blurry, out of focus, contemporary, and without any true value or meaning. This project was the byproduct of Moriyama's embrace of the fact that photography couldn't change the world in effective ways in which he once believed it could. Disheartened, this led to a dark period in Daito's life where he became depressed and wouldn't touch a camera for nearly a decade. The style of work Daido Moriyama produced for Provoke and Farewell Photography comes from his lived experience and was a reaction to the cultural climate at that time in Japan. Daido was born in Osaka in 1938, during the Second World War. His early life involved constantly moving around his home country, living in Tokyo, Hiroshima, and Chiba before returning to Osaka at age 11. During his youth, he lost his father and brother, had difficulty at school, and experienced the cultural shift that came with the U.S. occupation of Japan. The development of his photographic style coincided with this shift, as many things changed artistically in the country as a side effect of American occupation. The embodiment of these changes shone through in the avant-garde photography collective he joined when he moved back to Tokyo in 1961 with dreams of becoming a photojournalist. The collective he joined was called Vivo. It started in 1959 as a response to what the group saw as stale post-war photography and was influenced by the American and European New Vision movement, which took place between World War I and II. That movement involved photographers using a variety of different techniques that were meant to push photography in a new direction. It was during his time with Vivo that Dido would begin to work under Iko Hose, another highly influential and historically significant Japanese photographer whose style went heavily against the norms of the day. It was Hose who Moriyama credits with teaching him the fundamentals of photography and pushing him to create his own work. His time with Vivo is what led to his involvement in Provoke and what jumpstarted the unique and standout work that Dido became known for.
Throughout the course of my deep dive into the work of Daito Moriyama, two projects came up time and time again that epitomized the way he conceptualized and created the work that he became known for. Those two projects are titled A Hunter and Accident, and they were released between the Provoke magazine and Farewell Photography projects. While I'm traveling, I take photos that are guided by my feelings and physical obsessions or fetishes. So my pictures have nothing to do with the local character and universality. A Hunter was inspired by the travel that took place in and the structure of Jack Kerouac's novel On the Road. It inspired Moriyama to get in the car and take a road trip around Japan, often shooting an immense amount of photos since he cites that the speed and pace at which he took photos was a major aspect of this project a project that turned into a serialized publishing through Asahi Camera and allowed Moriyama to dedicate himself to one subject over the course of three years. This body of work largely focuses on how Japan was changing after World War II and contains one of his most well-known photos titled Stray Dog. A Hunter is a work that many of his contemporaries conclude put his entire life on display, like a movie when flipping from one end of the book to the other. With this accident series, I want to be inside accidents and incidents, and thus reflect upon the life and death of human beings. The accident series was released monthly and was produced by Asahi Camera Photo Magazine in 1969. It was meant to reflect upon how mass media portrayed the news and heavily sensationalized events that took place around the world. The project was inspired by the mass production qualities found in the work of Andy Warhol, who is an artist Moriyama greatly admired taking that inspiration as far as to screen print the photos when they were released in their photo book form. The photos of this book are made up of re-photographed or photocopied images from the news of major media events such as the Watergate scandal or LBJ announcing the suspension of bombing in North Vietnam, as well as actual car accidents or other more common news occurrences. The reproductions were termed equivalents by Moriyama. He has stated that the purpose was to draw attention to how much truth photography holds. In Dido's words, Photography is a media that can directly record truth. Photography as a media has failed to record the truth. That was the problem. Photography is truth and simultaneously it is a lie. This is something that I continue to sense acutely as doubt in the duality concentration inherent in a photograph's image. That having been said, such photography that has both truth and fiction as well as multiplicity can in fact further open and expand the potential of expression through photography. Photography supersedes a momentary and fixed idea. It supersedes language and becomes a language onto itself. Get outside. It's all about getting out and walking. That's the first thing. The second thing is forget everything you've learned about the subject of photography for the moment and just shoot. Take photographs of anything and everything, whatever catches your eye. Don't pause to think. Personally, I think you need to get your hands on one of the 150 books he published during his life to fully appreciate his work and how it flows together. The sequencing creates this kind of kinetic energy that can only really be experienced in person instead of seeing any single image digitally. This matter of sequencing is something that he learned during his time at Vivo when he also learned how to experiment with processing and developing as well as binding and publishing. Without this knowledge, his images in isolation would hold nowhere near the same weight. Throughout all of his work, he always embraces the Japanese aesthetic of wabi-sabi to find beauty in imperfection. He has done this by producing work with extreme contrast, rawness, some of the heaviest grain you'll ever see, and odd tilted angles. Hardly ever producing photos that those obsessed with technical perfection over feeling would consider good. He often explored Shinjuku during his time shooting in the 1960s when it was a significantly different place than it is today. The grittiness of Shinjuku at that time only pushing the feelings conveyed in his images further. All this contributed to defining the Ari Buri Bokeh style that was mentioned earlier, but Daido claims, I never consciously shot that way, nor do I care. He claims that he was strongly inspired by William Klein's books of New York, Moscow, Rome, and Tokyo, published when he was young. That inspiration in tandem with the cheap, compact cameras he used, his propensity to shoot without looking through the viewfinder, and his highbrow thoughts of what many at the time would consider lowbrow photography all come together to define the truly unique style that is Daido Moriyama's. Even though film has played such a big part in launching his career and making him the revered photographer he is today, Moriyama rejects the mentality that film is precious and somehow leads to more desirable results. Since he takes so many shots, it isn't practical for him to work with film anymore for a myriad of reasons. 
among them the time and financial cost that come with acquiring, shooting, developing, and processing film. He has migrated completely into the digital world since the late 2000s and shows no sign of looking back. I won't deny that there was a brief period when I tried to shoot both, analog and digital, but it wasn't long before I went over to digital completely. The reason? Simply, that digital cameras are a good fit for street photography. As I've said countless times before, my photography is all about quantity. I take lots of shots. Digital cameras are just so amazingly convenient. Speaking for myself, though, I'm more than happy to move on. I think the chances of going back to film photography are close to zero. Today, Daito Moriyama is in his 80s and he hasn't stopped shooting. Although I have some constraints, including my health, I want to take as many photos as possible each day. 